वेलकम बैक एवरी वन टूडे वील बी स्टार्टिंग विद द लास्ट सेशन ऑफ द वीक वन वील बी कवरिंग द रिमेनिंग पार्ट ऑफ द सेशन फाइव सो टू बी प्रिसाइज वंस वी आर डन विद दिस मॉड्यूल यू शुड बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड और कॉम्प्रीहेंड सेलिंग इन अ वूका वर्ल्ड एन सेलिब्रेट ताइचे उनो दिस इज अ पार्ट ऑफ एन एक्स्ट्रा फॉर्ड ऑफ अ थॉट थिंग विच वी आर हैविंग इन आर सेशंस नाउ बिफोर वी प्रोसीड फर्दर वी रियली नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड वॉट वूका इज I think to put it more in a dramatic way we can say it is like being in a flight with non-stop and unforeseen turbulence and you are clueless clueless in the sense like because you might not understand all the mechanics of how a plane flies right and a pilot may be knowing much more than that so in a way this indicates an element of someone being an expert which we'll also explore further as we'll dig deeper into the vuca world now I think again we also saw this in the last session. VUCA is all about V for volatile, U for uncertainty, A for ambiguity, and C for complexity. To give you a bit of a theoretical perspective, the term VUCA is basically based on the leadership theories of Warren Bennis and Bert Nanus, and later on it was used by the U.S. Army to kind of indicate their military environment. during the collapse of ussr because precisely for them everything was very very volatile which meant it kept changing things were very uncertain and there was a lot of ambiguity and chaos and things were definitely very complex for them later on the same ideas of vuca have been adapted to the world of education and business now let's look at it diagrammatically when you talk about something being volatile or an environment being volatile maybe we can say there is a very high speediness of change or there is a continuous turbulence which means there are definitely going to be a lot of changes in the environment which will kind of put the organization or maybe certain department off balance eventually leading to frequent disruptions and you don't even know like the event which has taken place and kind of put an organization off balance what is going to be the duration of that in a way you can say more volatile the world is the more faster it changes now when you move to the uncertainty aspect it is more like saying that you can't predict events that are going to happen in future as far as an organization is concerned with accuracy which means there is a very very low level of predictability and the other thing is in a truly uncertain environment even when you look at all these high fi statistical modelings they might not even help you that much in kind of going for further predictions in a way there is a huge difficulty in understanding what is going on even when the things could be partly perceived still there is going to be a kind of an element that will bring in some kind of an uncertainty and definitely we can say more uncertain the world is the harder it is to predict now as you move further and when you talk about complexity it simply indicates that the decision making is going to be very very complex and the reason for that is that there are a lot of parties involved in a way you can say there are interconnected parts which are going to have their own independent applications like if one part is behaving in a different way that is definitely going to impact how the decision making is done in that complex environment and more complex it is it breeds more of confusion and it is harder to analyze now when you move to the last part which is all about ambiguity you can say there is a lack of clarity and difficulty in interpreting causal relationships this facet is more like facing unknown unknowns which means you know nothing about you have no past experiences with respect to handling what is happening around you and things are very very chaotic like you cannot just have a full fledged strategy how you are going to move further see whatever i explained you just now was more generic now what we'll do is we'll start understanding all these four facets which is about volatile uncertainty complexity and ambiguity with respect to more of a sales world now again as i just told you the world of business is more or less in a continual fluidity which means that things keep changing i think maybe to understand this more in a different perspective or precisely from a business perspective we can say this captures the essence of industry dynamism which means that something or the other will keep changing see even if you look at your personal life things will keep changing or things will keep happening right like something might happen in your personal life then something might happen to the job that you are doing something might happen to the people that you care for or maybe you know 
with respect to different facets of life something might happen or might bring in a certain change now when you precisely talk about from sales world let's understand it this way let's say a new player has entered in the market we all know how jio kind of created a havoc for all the other players who were into this communication business or were telecom operators whether it was airtel whether it was bsnl whether it was vodafone we all know how things change so the perspective which i am trying to give you is if you have a player who has just entered the market this and is kind of offering something maybe at better prices or or i think to put it in the best way he is giving a value offering to the customers the best of quality at a very low price then definitely you are going to be off balance and you might have to adapt your sales strategy with respect to that another example of looking at this could be let's say there are huge fluctuations in currency rates and whatever you were consuming as an important ingredient for your product gets expensive now eventually your product price is also going to increase right because you will not prefer selling it at a loss now just imagine when you were trying to be a price leader you wanted to provide the product at a very minimal price by maintaining a certain level of quality just because of the fluctuations in currency rates and the following impact you are going to be off balance and you might have to bring in a different strategy to deal with this situation now as far as sales world is concerned in order to deal with the volatile environment it is very important that there is a very higher flexibility for combating the same you have to be very adaptable with respect to how you are dealing with consumers or your prospects as i just told you let's say if jio came up with the plan which was being liked by consumers it was the responsibility of other players also to kind of act in the moment or adapt it to the requirements of the consumers i think maintaining a resource reserve can also be a very good strategy with respect to being responsive to the changing situations and one thing which is very important is that you have to be in a way prioritize or maybe bring it on your list of top priority that you attempt to anticipate changes that might happen in the environment now as we move to the next part which is uncertainty this in a way symbolizes the extent to which future can be predicted with accuracy or i think maybe in very simplistic ways this reflects our inability to completely decode the situations around us i think one example of this could be when i was reading or collecting more information about vuka world i think in one of the articles someone has very beautifully written that if you have witnessed the covid pandemic i think when you talk about vuka it becomes very self explanatory even from our personal examples so with respect to this uncertainty regarding end of covid pandemic or with respect to when the lockdown is going to end also indicates how uncertain things were not in our personal lives for also for businesses as well and similarly for sales also things were very unknown see because until and unless the lockdown ends you can't have a strategy for reopening your stores and then working out how you can foster trust and more of confidence to consumers or to shoppers to bring them back one way or another example with respect to sales dynamics could be competitors launching new products right or maybe because of let's say a very good marketing intelligence team you have an idea you know that the competitor is coming up with a new product or maybe there is an ongoing product development project which competitor is doing you might have uncertainty with respect to your product if you think they have kind of you know got hold of a very good technology which might definitely impact the demand which you are enjoying for your products so in order to make up for the uncertainty when you talk about a sales organization it is very important for them that they start acting as marketing intelligence agents i'm talking about the role of a sales person who is kind of dealing with customers on ground level or maybe other stakeholders as well it is very important for an organization to prioritize collecting information and then utilizing it in the best scientific ways to derive insights from it and even if it requires structural changes in the sense like you need to have a policy or you need to have a different unit who who should do this then please go ahead and do this in another way you can also say that you know they are required to go beyond the existing sources of information and have continuous dialogue with the customers i i i think this in a way sums up the fact that you can only tackle uncertainty when you are acting very smart and kind of keep keeping in touch with what is happening in your environment right because it will kind of make you proactive with respect to you know taking actions or adapting to 
द चेंजिंग सिचुएशन दैट यू माइट जस्ट फेस और एज आई सेट द फोकस मस्ट बी ऑन enhancing the engagement with the customers and co-creating with them and whenever you bring in the element of co-creating it definitely indicates that you work as collaborators with them with respect to solving their problems bringing the changes in products and improving the processes that also you have and which might they also be having as your collaborators now when you talk about the third aspect which is complexity this facet simply indicates that there are a lot of factors that need to be taken into account before you decide on your strategy and specifically this interconnectedness between these factors further enhances the level of complexity now i think you might remember that we discussed the concept of team selling why is it required simply because you have a lot of players when you go and sell or you sit across the table you might need someone who is very good in negotiations you might need someone who is very good in you know has that knowledge about what competitors are doing and how our product is better than them with respect to convincing the other party you might also need someone who comes from finance department who will be more proactive with keeping everything in check with respect to financing or maybe even let's say hinting out what is the best price that we can offer so this kind of captures the essence of the fact that there is a complexity and there are a lot of players involved i think with respect to sales let's consider this example let's say you have an organization which is catering to markets or different segments of consumers across us let's say bangladesh then india then you can consider other countries also maybe let's also consider for that matter nepal and sri lanka right so the point is in all these countries you have different regulatory frameworks right different legal frameworks and the other things that you have you have different customers coming from different cultures different education level different backgrounds you know the social fabric is entirely different in all these countries now just imagine if you want to sell in all these countries you are definitely required to deal with a complex environment in which one strategy may not work for all these countries right so that's how the element of complexity comes in like so as far as this is concerned sales people would be required to adapt to the cultural changes while not only selling but handling negotiations also in these countries and this definitely also indicates an aspect of developing specialist this indicates that whenever you are hiring and you are dealing with different countries with respect to selling then you might need people who will understand their language because that will work well who understand their culture who are well versed with global dynamics at, at least for the markets that you are catering to right because this specialization is definitely going to help you a great deal in working effectively in these countries and the another way of handling complexity is always kind of allocate your resources towards maybe we can say the mechanics that you can utilize for minimizing risk in buying situations for both sellers and buyers which means for yourself also and for the customers also and definitely if it is a key account now the last part which we are going to understand is ambiguity which means that you have no threats from the past that you can utilize for making out of the current situation what better than covid right we all know how ambiguous it was no one knew when the lockdown is going to end no one knew how the treatment is going to happen no one even knew why this was happening how this was happening or how things were working out it was only at the time when they got some data points with respect to patients or how this is spreading that they were able to decipher a lot of things so ambiguity is more like being in a very chaotic environment where the reality seems completely hazy and no right answer exist for what you will be doing now with respect to a business world when you talk about ambiguity maybe you can say like entering into unknown terrains going beyond your core competencies like you come up with the product and the kind of customers that you have not tackled to let's say one of the bike manufacturers or automobile companies now get into restaurants business right completely diff- different terrains different mechanics of operating in hospitality industry and automobile industry so this in a way can lead to ambiguity or let's say when a business is diversifying in unrelated businesses but see if you talk about a salesman ambiguity can come from internal you know environment also external also external as in with respect to understanding the demands of customers or how their preferences keep changing right and when you talk about internal dynamics that can also be a reason for ambiguity in the sense like when you have a boss who is not clear with 
how we should be moving forward or maybe you have a an executive in top position who is kind of still figuring out where he'll he like to take the organization like he might feel no i don't want the organization to be a price leader we want to focus on quality and things like that so that can also bring a kind of ambiguity as far as the business world is concerned now when we talk about handling ambiguities an organization should be ready to experiment and test hypotheses which means that they should invest in marketing research studies they should come go ahead and test the ideas Let, let's say they might even decide to go for product experimentation with respect to whether this new segment is going to welcome our product or buy our product or not or maybe with respect to what are the changes that you sh we should bring in our current product line to kind of you know make it more lucrative for different segments that exist for the competitors and things like that so the key for again handling ambiguities being pro at proactive with respect to doing a lot of research when you talk about ambiguity you can say you you develop a failure culture which means that you are willing to take that risk you are willing to test you are willing to experiment and you don't fear getting failed up because once you fail you definitely learn a lot of things even with respect to what you should not be doing which anyway indicates half of the job is done so as far as the selling and vuca dynamics is concerned i think these are the four questions which a sales manager should answer himself with respect to dealing if effectively in a vuca world first is are my sales people well versed with consultative selling or has it become a part of our sales culture now why we need to talk about the consultative selling see simply this aspect indicates that you have been in touch with customers or your prospects with respect to understanding their processes their functions their requirements for the products which anyway is going to help you deal with maybe let's say ambiguity or reduce uncertainties with respect to how their demands are going to change in future are they well armed with right information holistically when they meet prospects right do they have idea what is it that the competitors are doing do do they have idea let's say if your present prospect or customer has decided to enter into a new business where you can also provide them kind of fulfill their demands by offering something which will be easy for an organization to maybe modify or bring in for them because this anyway will not only bring more of business but is also going to provide you foothold with respect to bringing more of revenues for an organization and kind of you know having that relationship with customers which is going to pay off even when the environment is ambiguous or there is complexity or the uncertainty creeps in are they acting as listening post again this is more of an aspect of maybe you can say consultative selling but definitely this highlights that you should be open to listening to customers if a sales person only thinks about speaking and it and is not ready to listen what the prospect or client or customer has to say then he will never get that idea maybe let's say again how he is planning to change his business over course of time or maybe how he is going to change his processes let's say the prospect sees or the customer says now he is thinking of using a different technology where the raw material that you are providing to him may not work or he might look for something else then just imagine how your business is going to get impacted you should always acting as listening post as a salesman and this is not only related to like understanding what the customer says this is also related to talking to competitors with respect to what is it that they find good about the products that your competitors are providing them the other thing is how they are negotiating on price see why this becomes important is if you remember we just talked about talked about that you also need a resource reserve right and that will come in from the money or the price that you are charging for the products because that's how revenue comes in so the point is you should not be selling your products at such a low price that you don't have enough resources to kind of sustain in the market whenever it gets complex or whenever you know there is a lot of ambiguity or complexity enters in so this is again one of the perspectives which i wanted you to have over how a sales manager can survive better when we talk about a vuca world now as a part of an extra fodder for thought i want you to know about this gentleman tai chi ono he is a man who is behind the lean manufacturing systems getting the limelight that they deserve or he is someone who kind of brought this into 
execution. Now, Taichi is considered as the father of Toyota production systems, which later set the foundation for lean manufacturing systems in the US. He stands credited for rebuilding Toyota after Second World War in mid-1970s. And he is the one who kind of fueled or maybe propelled the idea of just-in-time production systems and is widely celebrated for a lot of books that he has written. But one thing which we can connect with respect to the sales world or maybe I think to put it in a more exciting way, you might be wondering why I have kept this as a part of an extra fodder for thought in which in a way doesn't align directly or maybe very much linked to the sales systems. That is precisely because he came up with the concept of Gamba. Now I will be further explaining you how that works in this aspect of VUCA selling or in sales world. So I would urge you to go ahead and read more about this gentleman for the fantastic contributions that he has made to the management world. Now I want you to have a perspective on the strategies which can be effectively utilized for navigating our way through the VUCA world. So the first one is Gemba Walk which again comes from the thought processes of Taichi Uno. Now, Gamba is basically a Kaizen term which was coined by Taichi Uno. Now, see, if you talk about someone who is going and recording a song, I think studio is Gamba for them. Or if you maybe look at from the perspective of Formula 1 teams, Gamba is where the car is. Now, technically, what he is trying to indicate was that just get to the flows in the sense like whatever activities you are in, just go and observe them. Maybe let's say if you are into you know, cost minimization profile. Go and sit with production people and see how that happens. Go and sit with the people who are procuring raw materials and see how it is being done so that on the basis of observation, you might be able to figure out a lot of things with respect to reducing that cost or maybe making that process more effective. Now, let's adapt the same concept to the sales dynamics in a VUCA world. Now, what he is trying to say is with respect to going to the flows and connecting it with VUCA is that the salesperson should physically visit the places not only within the organization but also the places of the clients as well. Let's say they might go and see how their product are being manufactured, how they are analyzing the data, how the customer functions are happening, how customer support functions are happening because this in a way will provide them a lot of right inputs with respect to the sales development processes or very, very insightful inputs with respect to the things that might impact a sales call, right? But the key point is they should be willing and open to ask questions because that will only give them perspective about whatever they are observing. If they just observe and in case they have any doubts or there is something which might impact the sales call and they are not kind of digging deep further into it, then this technique might have limited impact. But I also personally feel that this can make a lot of difference. Just imagine that you are having meetings with various teams that functions in your client's business and you are trying to understand their processes and various things, how collaboration, maybe in a other ways, how fruitful this collaboration is going to be if this is done in this way. Now, another technique which you can use for kind of navigating your way effectively is challenger sales method. Now, this is all about being a consultant to your prospect or customers. Understand their processes and functions and activities, which you are also doing as a part of Gemba Walk, right? But what challenger sales method kind of puts forth is to challenge yourself with respect to, you know, identifying ideas, how you can help them improve. Or maybe you can say, challenge yourself with respect to finding out how you can help the clients in improving their businesses because that again is going to be a kind of a seed with respect to having a long term fruitful relationship with them. So overall maybe you can say when you talk about the challenger sales method the key lies in thinking divergently, communicating early and continuously innovating with respect to the challenges that salesperson are going to set for themselves. Now there is another technique which again I found out could be used with respect to effectively dealing in a VUCA world. This is basically called as holocracy. Now, this was developed by Brian Robertson in 2007. Now, what this strategy says is 
that you have to focus on decentralization or in a way you can say you have to kind of go away with the traditional hierarchy of leadership in which you know you have to take approvals for everything they have all the authority with respect to deciding what you should do what you should not do so what this strategy proposes is that you have different functional teams who are playing important role you give them that authority to take decisions i think maybe it's more like if someone is doing an important job you give them that empowerment to decide what should be done because it is that person who is spending majority of his energy in finding out what could be best in this situation definitely you can have meetings and you can brainstorm with respect to you know figuring out whether what the other person is proposing is going to work or not but at least give them that authority and that definitely might bring in some magical results see i would also urge you to look at the video maybe we can look at this video now in which holocracy is being explained with respect to an employee called as adam i hope you will enjoy watching this video this is adam he goes to work every day and senses tensions within his organization the feeling that something could be better than it currently is in one case it's a task or responsibility that no one owns in another it's an inefficient and wasteful process how can he improve the way things work First, he turns to his manager, Karen, but she's overwhelmed and can't make all the decisions. So employees rely on consensus building and politics, but that's too slow and things get stuck. When they can't influence each other effectively, all people can do is protect their turf. Ultimately, they disengage and the entire organization suffers. Holacracy is a new way of organizing your company. It's designed to remove obstacles so work can get done faster with more clarity and more autonomy. With Holacracy in place, instead of trying to convince his boss to act, Adam can propose getting the authority he needs to act on his own. He goes to a special meeting designed to achieve incremental improvements in the way things are organized. It follows a disciplined process that gives everyone a voice, but without the tyranny of consensus. In the meeting, Adam gets more authority to fix issues himself so he can move forward without requiring his manager's help. In this way, Holacracy distributes leadership throughout the company, empowering everyone to be an entrepreneur in their roles. Instead of serving the boss and fighting the status quo, everyone drives continual improvement, serving the purpose and the customers. and this has been taken from the holocracy youtube channel so i really hope you enjoyed the video now again what other methods do you think can be used to survive in a vuka world this is more like again stimulating you to think see i can only discuss ideas but things are going to get better when you will also start thinking what is it that will work because you might not agree with all the strategies that we have discussed so now it's time for you to get a little creative and maybe you can post in your ideas or what you think can be the better strategies for dealing in a vuka world there is another framework which again i'll explain in just brief it was developed by us air force fighter john r boyd he basically suggested that whenever you are dealing in a vuka world you can use the uda framework which means first observe the things then on the basis of what you observe and when you get that clarity orient yourself with respect to what will work in this situation but you need to have a clear cut clarity about the observations that you have so once you have oriented yourself and you have decided you know this is what you will be doing then just have the right mix of resources and strategies and processes in place to act so there is one particular article which is available you know in a blog which i'll be sharing with you on the forum and i would request you to read more about it because uda is again one of the very thrilling frameworks which can be utilized when we talk about the vuka world so this is more like i'm giving you a kind of an homework to read more about it now to sum up when we talk about a vuka world what is a simple fact today could be an uncertain ambiguous and complex change tomorrow i think peter f trucker's quote the greatest danger in times of turbulence is not the turbulence it is to act with yesterday's logic see this is what vuka is all about right which kind of requires you to be on toes you can't just you might be facing the similar situation that you had faced let's say in 
2005 but the strategy that you adopted at that time might not work in your business now because see even if you look at from the sales world how the requirements of customers has changed inflation has changed how you price new competitors have come in global dynamics has impacted a lot of things emergence of online channels information technology penetration of internet has changed a lot of things let's also look at one of the positive spin of fuka you can have a vision in place of volatility the purpose is more important than the plan you can have an understanding instead of uncertainty stop observe and listen maybe we can say you can use the uda framework to kind of fight the uncertainty clarity over complexity draw meaning and insights out of confusion because see every confusion also brings in a lot of opportunity for you to try new things and succeed in you know all together different and very very magnificent ways and the last is have adaptability over ambiguity which means collaborate and experiment be open to failures the situation might look chaotic right now right but once you adapt to it you might come across something you know which could in a way make it more exciting for your business so i thank you these are the references that we have used for these lectures or the sessions that we had references for all the online and other resources have been provided as the footnotes i thank you for attending all the sessions in week 1 and i hope they have been insightful for you but still there is one topic that i think we'll be taking which is about understanding various types of salesmen and then it will again put a lot of things in perspective with respect to what you'll be learning in further weeks so i thank you for now wishing you a great day